The functional index 2 is a clinical objective measure of muscle endurance, developed and validated for patients with adult polymyositis and dermatomyositis. The FI2 measures muscle endurance in seven muscle groups with a maximal number of 60 or 120 repetitions, indicating good muscle endurance. All tasks are performed in a standardized pace of 40 or 80 metronome beats per minute. The maximal time to perform each task is 3 minutes. The FI2 can be performed on both the right and the left body sides, requiring a maximal 33 minutes. However, there is a very good correlation between right and left sides, allowing testing only the dominant side, requiring a maximal of 21 minutes. The intra-rater reliability of all tasks is good given that the patient has been familiarized with the tasks on one previous occasion. The inter-rater reliability is also good given that the observers read the written instructions and discuss and practice on one occasion. However, during a long-term study or for long-term use in clinical practice, it is advised that observers meet and discuss the FI2 occasionally to ensure continuous inter-rater reliability. The FI2 does not require expensive equipment. All you need is a chair without arm or back support, a 1 kilo weight cuff, a bench, a 25 cm high stool or step-up board, a digital metronome and a Borg 010 scale. Before starting the FI2, make sure to have the required equipment ready. Familiarize the patient with the Borg 010 scale to rate perceived muscular exertion. Numbers of correct performed repetitions following five learning repetitions are registered for each task together with perceived muscle exertion. That is, the first five repetitions for each task are not counted. If the patient can perform only the five learning repetitions, the score is zero. Each task is stopped if the patient cannot keep up with the given pace, starts to compensate or is unable to correct within three repetitions. Record a number of correctly performed repetitions. If the patient can correct within three repetitions, continue testing. If the patient performs the maximal number of repetitions, stop the test and ask the patient to rate perceived muscle exertion. If the patient has trouble moving according to the metronome beats, you can help by somehow demonstrating the right movement pace. Try to perform as many repetitions of each muscle group task as you can, or stop when I indicate that you reach the maximal number of repetitions. Try to follow the pace given by the metronome for each muscle group task. After completing each task, you will be asked to rate perceived muscle exertion in a tested muscle group. The Borg 010 scale goes from 0, indicating no exertion, to 10, indicating almost maximal exertion. How exerting was it right before you stopped? Choose the number that best describes your perceived muscular exertion. The patient is sitting on the chair. Make sure that both feet are in contact with the floor and that the arms are hanging relaxed alongside the trunk. Ask the patient to lift one arm up forward above the head with a straight elbow. If the patient cannot lift the arm as high as instructed, check passive range of motion in a humeral scapular joint. In case of a limited range of motion, put on the weight cuff, start testing lifting the arm as high as possible. If the patient needs your assistant to lift all the way up, do not start testing and record zero repetitions. When these initial tests are done, put the weight cuff around the wrist, set a metronome of 40 beats per minute and start testing. If the patient has difficulties lifting the arm as high as before or can't follow the pace, ask the patient to correct. 
If that is possible, within three repetitions, continue testing, and if not, stop the test. Use the same starting position. Ask the patient to lift one arm up to the side above the head with a straight elbow. Going up, the palm of the hand should be facing the ceiling and facing the floor when going down. If the patient can lift all the way, start testing. If the patient cannot lift the arm as high as instructed, check the passive range of motion in a humeral scapular joint. In case of a limited passive range of motion, start testing lifting the arm as high as possible. In case of a normal passive range of motion, do not start testing and record zero repetitions. If the patient has difficulties lifting the arm or can't follow the pace, ask the patient to correct. If that is possible within three repetitions, continue testing and if not, stop the test. Have the patient lying down in a supine position with a horizontal head support. The arms should be positioned alongside the trunk. Hold one hand on the patient's shoulder. Ask the patient to lift the head as high as possible. If the patient can lift all the way, start testing. If the patient cannot lift all the way up, check passive range of motion in neck flexion. In case of a limited passive range of motion, start testing lifting the head as high as possible. In case of a normal passive range of motion, do not start testing and record zero repetitions. If the patient has difficulties lifting the head as high as before or cannot follow the pace, ask the patient to correct. If that is possible within three repetitions, continue testing, and if not, stop the test. The patient is lying in a supine position on the bench with straight knees and a pillow under the head. The arms should be alongside the trunk. Ask the patient to lift one leg with a straight knee up to your hand. The heel should be 40 cm above the bench. If the patient can lift all the way, start testing, and if not, do not start testing and record zero repetitions. If the patient has difficulties lifting the leg or can't follow the pace, ask the patient to correct. If that is possible within three repetitions, continue testing and if not, stop the test. The patient is standing up with one hand on the wall for balance support. When testing the left leg, climb up with the left leg first, descending using the right leg. If the patient can climb the stool without difficulty, start testing. If the patient needs to compensate, do not start testing and record zero repetitions.
If the patient starts having difficulties climbing or can't follow the pace, ask the patient to correct. If that is possible, within three repetitions, continue testing and if not, stop the test. Use the same start position. Instruct the patient to lift the heels as high as possible, standing on the toes and go back down again. If the patient can lift the heels at least one centimeter from the floor with straight knees, start testing. If the patient can't lift the heels from the floor or needs to compensate, record zero repetitions. If the patient starts having difficulties lifting the heels according to the given pace, ask the patient to correct. If that is possible within three repetitions, continue testing and if not, stop the test. The patient is standing with the back against the wall with the heels 15 centimeters from the wall. Instruct the patient to lift the toes as high as possible with straight knees. All metatarsophalangeal joints must lift from the floor. If the patient can't lift the metatarsophalangeal joints from the floor or needs to compensate, do not start testing and record zero repetitions. If the patient starts having difficulties lifting in the given pace, ask the patient to correct. In case the patient can correct within three repetitions, continue testing and if not, stop the test. When the FI2 is completed, calculate the percent of maximal repetitions for each muscle group. If the patient scored zero on any or all tasks, it could still be interesting in a clinical setting to record how many repetitions the patient can perform in a slower pace.